I'm Don Harward, and, and I am the director of Bring Theory to Practice, and my colleague, uh, Sally Pingray, and Sally and I uh, co-founded the project. Some, well, we, we keep debating whether or not it was uh, 2003 or 2004, but it's at least some 13 to 15 years uh, in our, of our history. So the primary uh, folks I of our of our work is connecting higher education learning, engaged learning, with the civic responsibilities of higher education, with issues of preparation for life choices that students must make following uh, their university and college experience, with the whole question of well-being. And, and that allows me to affect, say a little bit about why this conference is important. Uh, and I'll do that, but I first want uh, the audience to recognize uh, my partner in all of this and Sally and her interest in the project. So um, I got to know Don, um, it was, we decided 12, 14 years ago, and we don't know, as he said, um, it was when my daughter was a student at Bates where Don was um, president of the college. And um, I was concerned about the uh, student engagement in terms of their um, both emotional and intellectual engagement at the time um, as a parent of a daughter who was attending the college. And I got to know Don um, and we started talking about um, issues of engagement in the classroom, um, student well-being, educating the whole person, and I think we decided that it would, was time to begin a project where maybe we could have an effect on other campuses to redirect um, their attention to how stu students are um, taught in the classroom and perhaps in a more comprehensive way in terms of looking um, at both their intellectual and emotional engagement. So why this conference is particularly important is because it focuses so directly on the student, which is, uh, was very important when we first started the project. That, that's uh, quite the point, and I think uh, quite well said. Thank you, Sally. The, uh, the thought I have about the importance of the conference really falls into sort of two categories. One has to do with sort of the form of this conference. Um, as Sally indicated, we've been supporting institutions and projects and conferences and research and writings for the last 12 or 15 years uh, having to do with our thematic emphases. Um, and among the conferences that we have formulated and run, operated over the years, uh, this one is quite unique. Uh, it's first of all the largest, I think, uh, conference we have, we have held. It's certainly the most complex. Um, it deals with, it had a series of, of initiated uh, dimensions that are, are united in interesting ways. They're connected, so the thematic connections to them having to do with intersectionality and well-being. Uh, but the multiple sort of rings of this uh, uh, conference are uh, very delicately put together in important ways. And as I mentioned, our work has focused on the interplay among really four dimensions of, uh, of attention starting with uh, issues of engaged learning and what that means in higher education, its connection to civic engagement, its connection to preparation for life choices that students must make, and essentially this question of its connection to well-being. And we, along the way, not only hold conference on these themes, we write things about these themes, um, and most recently we've published a volume on well-being in higher education. And in doing that, we've come to understand the complexity of well-being, at least into two fundamental areas, one having to do with feelings, um, quantifiable uh, feelings and experiences um, that indeed have become a real part of positive psychology. And the other dimension is called eudaimonic well-being, which has all to do with this very complex notion of identity formation and self-realization. So the conference is important not only because it 
is an element of coherence of the sorts of things we've been interested in over the years. But we've taken a very important step forward in this conference in a rather detailed examination of various notions of identity and the intersectionalities of identities. And so in terms of the, of the conference itself, the complexity of the content of the conference is equally of importance and of interest to us. I would just add that um, I think one of the things that we've been able to do most successfully as a small project um, is to be able to bring people together to have such conversations and really to give people uh, permission to talk about things which um, uh, at a certain point in time, they were things that people wouldn't have been comfortable talking about because they're very personal. Um, how you feel, um, what your past experience was, difficulties you may have had in your life. There are conversations that are now shared between uh, different constituents on the campus. So students might have this conversation, these conversations, not just in, a, in an, a student affairs uh, situation where there would be a problem, but with a professor who um, can talk to them about their own experiences in life. And so it's opportunities for people to come together and learn about each other and, and really um, feel comfortable about uh, expressing who they are and uh, feeling empathy for others. And I think um, that's been something that we've managed to do by just giving people um, the space really to come together and um, through these conferences and workshops and work through some of these issues together. Um, people who wouldn't ordinarily even have had a chance to meet on their own campuses. So I think I'm particularly proud of that. Thank you.